Today we're going to review the Gen 3 Tesla wall connector we have here. It's been available for a little less than a year now. We're going to first explain the changes Tesla made from the Gen 2 wall connector. We're going to give it our cable deep freeze test. We'll then talk about some of the adapters you might want to get if you have the wall connector. We'll offer our exclusive charger rater five-star rating based on the features it has to offer. And then we're going to tell you why you might not even need one of these if you buy a new Tesla. But first, don't forget, click that subscribe button and tap the notification bell so you don't miss any content coming up here on State of Charge. Tesla's Gen 3 wall connector replaces the Gen 2 high-powered wall connector. So we're going to go over some of the changes that Tesla made. Some are good, some aren't that good in my opinion. First off, the previous generation, the Gen 2, was called the high power wall connector because it could deliver 80 amps to the vehicle. Now, the new wall connector can only deliver a maximum of 48 amps. But that's not a problem because Tesla no longer sells any vehicles that can accept more than 48 amps. Previously, on Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X vehicles, customers had the option of ordering the car with what they called dual onboard chargers, and it could accept up to 80 amps. So it made sense that Tesla sold a wall connector that could deliver that much power. But Tesla discontinued that option, and now none of their vehicles can accept more than 48 amps. So when they came out with this Gen 3 wall connector, they lowered the maximum output to 48 amps. Now 48 amps can deliver 11.5 kilowatts to the vehicle. And although every vehicle charges at a different rate, the Tesla Model 3, that translates to 44 miles of range per hour for the Tesla Model 3. Now Tesla also provides this really neat graph on their website that shows depending on how the wall connector is configured, what circuit it's on, how many miles of range per hour it will deliver to each of the vehicles they sell. It's, it's a very nice offering and I urge people to take a look at that so you get a kind of an idea of how fast your car will charge depending on what circuit you have the high powered or the wall connector connected to. Now, another change Tesla made was, and this is my biggest gripe, with the new wall connector. They reduced the length of the cable. Now previously you could order the high powered wall connector with either an eight and a half foot or a 24 foot cable. Now the new gen three wall connector, you have the option of eight and a half feet and 18 feet. 18 feet is the longest you can get on this cable. In my opinion, that's just not long enough. And also I've had many comments on my site from other Tesla owners that complain about it and say that that's a deal breaker. They're not gonna get it now because of that. Now, I generally recommend that you should get a cable of at least 20 feet long. Now I know that is going to change from customer to customer. I'm sure I'm gonna get comments here that people are gonna say, oh, I only need a five foot cable or an eight foot cable. And you're right, some people only need a short cable, but most people, in my opinion, need a longer cable. Now, the average two-car garage in the U.S., at least for new constructions, is about 22 feet by 22 feet. That's about the size of my garage here. I can't charge my Tesla Model 3 if I don't back the car in. If I pull it straight in and I'm on that side of the garage, this cable won't reach it. I think your cable should reach almost any corner of your garage because some days you might need to park on one side, you might need to park on another side. You shouldn't have to back into your garage. So I think that was a really bad move on Tesla's part and I hope that they change that in the future. I'd like to see this go back to the 24 foot length that the Gen 2 high power wall connector had, at least as an option. You don't have to force it on people, but give us the option to get a longer cable if we want it. Now another change that Tesla made was, as you can see here, it's got a sleek, white tempered glass faceplate. Really nice look. Uh, the only thing that I complain about a little bit is it's really hard to see the Tesla name on that. That should light up, I think, like the, um, the power lights do, or at least have a little bit of a, uh, a brighter font so you could see it say Tesla. 
Uh, I'm proud that it's a Tesla and I want people to know it's a Tesla and I just want to see that it's a Tesla wall connector. You really can't see it with that. It's, it's, it's not very bright at all. So I think that's something that they can improve on. Super minor issue, but I think they missed the mark just a little bit with that. Now, this new uh, white tempered glass faceplate is really nice, looks great, um, but it probably won't be as durable as a plastic faceplate. You might crack this if you if you hit with something or drop it somehow by accident. So Tesla does sell a replacement. It's $90 and you can get it on their website. Just in case you do crack your faceplate, you can order a new one if you wanna drop the 90 bucks on it. Now another change Tesla made for the better is now this is now a Wi-Fi connected smart charger. Now it's going to be a smart charger because while it still is Wi-Fi connected, Tesla hasn't really released any of the features yet. I'm kind of getting a little anxious about this because I've had this installed for about 10 months now and we still don't have any of the features. Tesla's promised that this is gonna be able to load share to up to 16 units. Now, load sharing is a very good feature to have in a smart charger. Um, now, most people in your home, you wouldn't need it to load share over across 16 units. Why would anybody want that? That'd be good for apartment buildings, uh, condo complexes, areas where multiple residents live and you wanna have a bunch of these set up and you don't wanna run a circuit for each one because that gets very expensive. So having the ability to load share across multiple units is definitely a good feature to have and it saves money. But you might want two of these in your garage and having the ability to load share means you only have to run one circuit, preferably a 60 amp circuit so you can get full power. And then the two wall connectors will intelligently communicate with each other and distribute the power. So you'll have one car will fully charge when that's done. The other one will immediately start to charge. By the morning, you'll have two nicely charged cars. So load sharing is a good feature. I can't wait for it to be enabled. Uh, they're also promising that we'll be able to have remote monitoring, that there'll be firmware updates over the air, and that this will also be able to communicate with other Tesla products. They haven't really said what products, but we're assuming that would be a power wall. Having the charger to be able to communicate with your power wall definitely has its advantages. However, we don't really know yet because Tesla hasn't allowed us to use any of these smart charging features. So while it is a smart charger, we don't get any of the smart charging features just yet. Hopefully they come soon. When that happens, I'll definitely either update this review or make an entirely new review to go over the smart charging features. Now, another thing that's different about this unit is it's only available in a hardwired unit. You'll see that this has a hard wire to it right now, as opposed to all of the other chargers that we review here come in plug-in units. Uh, Tesla previously offered a wall connector in a plug-in unit. Now that wasn't the 80 amp uh, high powered wall connector. They had one that was lower rated it was uh, that could deliver 40 amps, uh, but they discontinued that. So now the Gen 3 wall connector only comes in a hardwired unit. Now, if you really wanted it to plug in, you could install a NEMA 1460 plug on this and then a NEMA 1460 outlet and make it a plug in unit. So, but that's on you. And I always recommend people get a qualified licensed electrician to do any of their wiring, especially if you're gonna add a plug to it and plug it into a, a, an outlet. I mean, I think that might be a cool thing to do. So you'd be able to remove it if you needed to, but it certainly isn't necessary, but you do have that options. Now, if you want this to deliver the full 48 amps, so you can charge your Tesla at the full 48 amps it can accept, you're gonna to need to put this on a dedicated 60 amp circuit. Now that'll require at the minimum a number six wire, but I always like to recommend going a little bit higher and putting this on a number four wire. This is gonna be a continuous load for many hours at a time overnight and a number four wire, while it's gonna cost a little more, is a little bit of better, it's a better choice. It adds a little bit extra layer of security. Now, one of the things you can do with this is derate the power. If you don't have a 60 amp circuit, let's say you only have a 40 amp circuit available on your, pa on, on your uh, service panel or even lower, 32 amp, 24 amp, 
Whatever you have available, you can derate this unit so it won't exceed the maximum power supply that the circuit can handle. Now you do that when you commission the charger and you set up the Wi-Fi smart charging feature. Uh, we're gonna go over that next and explain how that gets done after we show you a little bit about how to install this on the wall. So this is basically what the wall connector looks like when you have the wire box secured to the wall and you're ready to mount the faceplate. But let's go over quickly how we got here. Tesla provides a nice template so that it helps you decide how to mount this to the wall. And I say that because there are four different ways you can bring the wires into the wire box. From the bottom, as I've done here, there's also two knockouts on the lower part of the back of the wall box. Um, one on the left side, one on the right side, or you can bring the wires in through the top. Now, depending on which way you bring the wires in, Tesla recommends or advises you how to mount it onto the wall, where to mount the two screws uh, to, for it to not interfere with the wires or the knockout that you're gonna need to bring the wires in. Um, I've selected the two screws in the center of the wall box. Uh, it worked fine for me here because I came up through the middle. Actually, when you come up through the bottom, you could use any of the, of the screws. It's just when you're coming in through the back, then you don't wanna have the screw on the side where you're trying to pull the wires through from. So once you have this thing mounted on the wall, you pull your wires through. Now you'll notice the neutral is capped. Uh, like all EV charging equipment, it doesn't use the neutral wire. So you only have to land the two hot wires on these two terminal blocks here and your ground here on the left side. Uh, once that's all connected, what you're basically gonna do is take the unit and you'll notice there's three connections here that the unit has to um, snap into the wire box. You're basically just gonna take it, fit it up against it, put, push it on nice and tight, and then Tesla provides you with four screws, um, these small screws here, two go on the top of the unit and two go on the bottom of the unit. And the unit's done, it's installed. Now you wanna turn on your circuit breaker, but you're not completely finished. Because this is a Wi-Fi smart charger, it still has to be commissioned in order for you to use it. After you've completed the installation, the next step is commissioning the wall connector. First, turn on the circuit breaker and energize the wall connector. Next, use your Wi-Fi enabled device to connect to the SSID Wi-Fi signal sent out by the wall connector. You then need to join the wall connector network by either selecting the network and entering the password found in the quick start guide that came with the wall connector, or you can simply scan the QR code sticker provided in the quick start guide. Now, the wall connector is only gonna send out its network signal for five minutes. So if you don't complete this step in five minutes, you need to either turn the circuit breaker off and back on, which will initiate the procedure again, or you can press the button on the wall connector's connector, hold it for more than five seconds, and you'll see the green LED start to blink again on the wall connector, meaning it's ready to be commissioned. You then either scan the QR code found on the commissioning procedure instructions or manually enter the URL provided. You follow up the on-screen directions to complete the commissioning and enter the amperage of the circuit that you installed the wall connector on. Remember, in order for the wall connector to deliver the full 48 amps it's capable of, you need to have installed it on a dedicated 60 amp circuit. The wall connector can only deliver 80% of the circuit's maximum rating as per the National Electric Code. Now, if you didn't have a 60 amp circuit available, that's okay. The car will just charge a little bit slower. It's time for the cable deep freeze test for the Tesla wall connector. In this freezer, I coiled up the cable for the Tesla wall connector. Now, typically, we put the whole unit in the freezer, 
but the wall connector is hardwired, unlike the other chargers that we test here. So I couldn't remove that and freeze it. So what I had to do was run the cable into the freezer down here and coil it up tightly like we always do. But then I had to tape this freezer. You'll notice there's some tape on it because I had to make sure I closed the seal on the freezer well so it stayed nice and cold in there. Let's remove the tape now. Okay, and we're first going to test the temperature so you know that it's nice and cold in there. Negative 7 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 22 degrees Celsius. All right, let's see how the cable does. Take this. Slide this over there. As you can see, coiled it up into a nice loop, just as we do with all the cables, to make sure that they're in a small loop. So that way we can now see when we unravel it, if it bends and conforms to how we want it to go. It's pretty stiff. You can hear that cracking. That's not what you want to hear. All right, let's see if we can get this to go into larger loops. So the wall connector, you always want to roll this counterclockwise around the unit. So that way the connector can fit. All right, see it's fighting me and curling around. All right, I'm going to give up. I'm going to do that. And this. So see that? That's what you don't want. You want it to kind of bend and conform to what you're trying to get it to do, which in this case was nice long loops. And it's just not doing it. I can't get it to bend properly. So we're just going to do this. See how it wants to remain in those small loops that we provided? And it won't even bend enough to hang here. That's not what you want. This is probably, um, I'd say like a D, um, maybe even D minus, and it's gonna lose a point in our charger rater for not having a very pliable cable, one that's good for cold weather temperatures. I wouldn't wanna have this out, mounted outside in very cold temperatures to have to use this every day. It doesn't perform nearly as well as some of the other cables we've tested. So let's talk a little bit about connectors and adapters. The Tesla wall connector comes with the Tesla connector. No surprise there. Now Tesla uses a proprietary connector. No other electric vehicle manufacturers use this connector. Everybody else uses, at least here in North America, it's a little different in Europe, this connector here. It's called the J1772 connector. So, any other electric vehicle has an inlet that this connector fits into, while Tesla's on the vehicle has an inlet that this connects into. So what do you do if you have a Tesla wall connector and you want to charge your electric vehicle made by another brand, or if you have a, a, a charging station like these behind me that has the J1772 connector and you want to charge your Tesla? It's not a problem because there are adapters available for either situation. First off, every Tesla comes with this adapter here. Now this allows you to charge your Tesla on a charging station made by any of these third party brands and public charging stations, which generally uh, use the J1772 if they're not a Tesla destination charger. So what you basically do is take the, the connector, you stick this supplied adapter that comes with every Tesla into that, and then you plug this into your Tesla and it works just fine. Now, if it's the other way around, and let's say you are thinking about getting the Tesla wall connector, but you also have uh, an Audi e-tron or a Ford Mustang Mach-E, and, and, and now you've got a Tesla. So now you've got an electric vehicle from both manufacturers from both that use both uh, connectors. What you do then is you can charge your non-Tesla electric vehicle from the Tesla wall connector, but you then need to go out 
and buy one of these. Now these are made from a by a couple different manufacturers. This one's actually made by Lectron. It's a pretty um, good quality unit. And what you basically do is you stick your connector for your Tesla wall connector into this side. And then this side here plugs into any electric vehicle in North America. That's not a Tesla. Now these, these range in prices anywhere from 120 and 100 to 130 dollars to to up to like 220 to 250 depending on manufacturer and depending on the amperage now if you want to charge your electric vehicle at 48 amps for instance the full amount of power that the wall connector can provide now first of all there aren't a lot of electric vehicles on the market non-tesla electric vehicles that can accept 48 amps but if you do have one that can accept 48 amps and you want to charge your vehicle at the full amount that the wall connector can supply, then you're going to want to make sure you order one of these that's a 50 amp, a 50 amp one that can deliver up to 50 amps. Many of them on the market are 40 amp. Now, you can use those with the Tesla wall connector. You would just need to either derate the connector so that it delivers less power, or most electric vehicles allow you to get into their settings and limit the power that the car takes. You don't want more than 40 amps passing through this if it's a 40 amp adapter. So if you have an electric vehicle that can accept more than 48 amps, it probably isn't a bad idea to get a higher power one of these so you won't make any mistakes and forget or forget to change the setting and all of a sudden you're sending more power through this than you should. So now I'm gonna tell you why you might not need to buy a Tesla wall connector at all if you get a new Tesla. Now, one of the mistakes a lot of people make is they order their new electric car, Tesla, and they're all excited. And while they're waiting for the car to be delivered, they call their electrician and they get an estimate on installing the charging equipment. There's nothing wrong with that. So it's good to know about how much it's going to cost to install whatever you're going to use to charge your electric car. But then they go order a $500 Tesla wall connector. They don't realize that every electric car, Tesla's included, come with charging equipment free uh, with the car. Now, some manufacturers supply better charging equipment than other companies. Tesla happens to provide excellent charging equipment with the car that most people don't have to buy another um, wall connector or, or any one of these chargers to charge their car because the supply charging equipment is excellent. Now I'm going to compare that to this charger here, which is what BMW delivers with their i3s. This is a level one charger. It only works from a 120 volt regular household outlet charges the car very slowly. Um, you'll get about four, maybe five miles of range per hour of charging with one of these. It's good in a pinch and BMW calls it the occasional use charger. Even with the name is, that's built into it, they're telling you don't use this thing every day. Um, but it's different with the Tesla mobile connector. Tesla provides a high powered 32 amp charger. Now, the wall connectors, you remember, will deliver 48 amps to the vehicle. And all Tesla vehicles, except for the standard range plus Model 3, can accept 48 amps. amps. The standard range plus Model 3 can only accept 32 amps. That's what this delivers. So if you get a standard range plus Model 3, if you get a wall connector, it won't charge your car any faster than this will. But even if you don't have the standard range plus, if you have a Model X or a Model S or a Model 3, the dual motor long range, this is still going to do a really good job charging your car. Now, one thing I have to note is Tesla designs this so that you can use different adapters for different plugs. They used to include the 120 volt plug, which this is the same as what comes on this. So this is a, actually a dual voltage charger. You could charge at a regular household outlet albeit very slowly, as I said before, maybe four miles of range an hour, or you get a different adapter and you can then charge from a 240 volt outlet like what we have back here. Uh, Tesla used to include a NEMA 1450 240 volt adapter with their mobile charging connector. They don't anymore. They only give you 
the 120 volt uh, adapter, which most people aren't going to use. You'll use it in a pinch, like I said, but for most people, this isn't going to be sufficient to charge your Tesla up all night every day unless you really don't drive that much. If you only drive 10, 20 miles and maybe 30 miles a day, this, that, this might be enough, but it still might be inconvenient. So we kind of recommend installing a 240 volt um, outlet in your garage and then getting one of these adapters. Now Tesla sells a bunch of different adapters. They have like 10 different adapters. They're all about 35 bucks each. Most people get the NEMA 1450 adapter, which this is, because the NEMA 1450 outlet is the most popular outlet for electric car chargers and electric car owners. Most chargers come with a NEMA 1450 plug. One thing I will tell you is that um, this round pin on the, on, the connect on the adapter is the ground. And some electricians, if you just tell an electrician to install a NEMA 1450 outlet in your garage, the, the, and they don't ask you, they might install it with the ground down, they call it. So you'd have to plug it in like this. And then the, this plugs into the, um, uh, the unit here. So imagine if this was plugged in like this, this would kind of be draping over and hanging on the ground. So you want to specify to your electrician, if you're getting a NEMA 1450 uh, outlet installed and you plan on using it with the mobile connector, tell him you need the ground up and he'll know what that means. Basically, um, it'll, the, the outlet will be installed like this, where you'll plug it in this way, not this way. Um, the weird thing about it is some of the chargers come with the ground up, some of them come with the ground down. So on these outlets I have behind me, I've installed them where some of them I have ground up, some I have ground down. I can't tell you how many Tesla owners we see in the forums and on the Facebook groups where, you know, they'll say like, how come my, my plug doesn't work? It, 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 it's upside down. And we have to explain, oh, you're an electrician. You didn't specify. So if you don't specify it, they'll install it either way. So make sure you tell them ground up if you're going to put in a NEMA 1450 outlet to use with your mobile connector. In any event, um, the mobile connector will deliver 32 amps, so it needs to be on a 40 amp circuit. That's good enough for about 30 miles of range per hour for a Tesla Model 3. I said earlier, the mobile connector can charge at a rate of about 44 miles an hour. So yeah, it is faster unless you have the standard range plus, then it's the same. But if you have the long range Model 3 or Model Y, for instance, uh, it will charge the car a little bit quicker, but for most people, the car's in your garage eight, 10 hours a night, and you don't fully deplete your battery every day, so you don't need to recharge 300 miles of range every single day. If you do, get a higher power <laughs> charger because you'll, you'll appreciate it, but for most people, I'd say as much as 75 to 80% of the people, you don't need a higher powered unit than this. Um, and so what I recommend is when you get your Tesla, don't go out and spend anything. Have, it, have them put in uh, a NEMA 1450 outlet, um, see how that works. Uh, most people are gonna find that it works out fine. Now, the only thing is some people say, yeah, but I just wanna put this in my trunk and in case I need it on the road, there is that. But you can easily um, you know, use this every day and when you're going on a long road trip or somewhere where you, you, you think you might have to charge somewhere, it coils up really quickly, it unplugs, you put it back in here, you close it up and then you put it in the back. You don't have to leave this in the back of your car. Very rarely are you going to just come across uh, a situation where you've run out of charge and now you need to pull this thing out and find a NEMA 1450 outlet somewhere on the road. They're not easy to find. It's much easier to find a supercharger or a Tesla destination charger than a, a 1450 plug to plug into. Now, there are available campgrounds around the country, so you could do that, but there's different rules. Some campgrounds don't just let electric cars come in and plug in and pay for electricity. They want you to buy the slot for half a day or something. It gets really expensive. You're better off finding a supercharger or a destination charger. So my recommendation is if you're getting a new Tesla, if you're not sure if you need this or not, don't invest the money in a Tesla uh, wall connector or, or any charging station for your house. Just install the outlet, get the NEMA 1450 adapter, use your mobile connector for a while and see how it works out. If you find that it's being inconvenient, Later on, then you can upgrade and do something. You don't have to rush out all at once right when you're getting your car. This will work just fine and you'll probably find that you don't need to even spend any more money because what they provide you with works. That's it for the review. It's now time to offer our ratings. 
We always do our ratings in two parts here. First up, we use our Charger Raider points-based charging system, where we have five different categories, and the charger starts out with 15 points in each category, and then either adds or loses points depending on its performance and features. The first category is cost and value. Now we base this on a $500 cost and the charger loses or gains one point for every $50 it costs more or less. The Tesla wall connector costs $500 so it doesn't lose or gain any points. Next up is, is it a good value? We think the Tesla wall connector is an actually an excellent value for the price and the fact that it's a Wi-Fi connected smart charger. Now, sure those features don't work yet, but we are assuming that Tesla are, is going to bring those features online sometime soon. And in that case would make it an excellent value. It gets two extra points. The Tesla wall connector finishes up the cost and value category with 17 points. Next up is power and weatherproofing. The maximum kilowatt delivery. Uh, the way we do that is we take the maximum kilowatt delivery and we minus 10 and then round it up or down. In the case of the Tesla wall connector, it can deliver 11.5 kilowatt. We minus 10, so it gets two extra points. Does it have an adjustable power delivery? The Tesla wall connector can adjust its power. You can have it deliver the full 48 amps, and you can go all the way down to a much lower rating if you're on a circuit that can't support that extra power. It gets an extra point for that. The NEMA rating, it's NEMA 3 rated, so it doesn't get any points uh, for that. It doesn't get any extra points, it doesn't lose any points. Is it Energy Star certified? No, the Tesla wall connector is not Energy Star certified. It does not get a point. Does it do automatic restart? Yes, it does. That is if you have a power outage in the middle of a charging session. Once power is restored, will the charger immediately start to re-engage the vehicle and continue the charging session? Some chargers don't do that. The Tesla wall connector does. It gets an extra point. It finishes up the power and weatherproof rating category with a total of 19 points. Next up is construction and durability. We gave the uh, connector holster an excellent rating. Uh, it, it absolutely holsters the connector very easily. You don't have to hunt for the opening. Uh, you don't have to land the connector in there perfectly. You just slide it in that slot and let it go and it connects and holds the connector. The only, uh, if you want to call complaint that we have is if you're, if the wall connector is located in a tight set spot, say in between your two garage doors, having the side connector holster might be an issue. Um, I've seen people have it installed there and they don't seem to be complaining. I think it would seem to be a problem, but nobody seems to complain about it. Uh, all the other charging stations have a front uh, mounted connector holster, the ones that have connector holsters at least. Uh, the Tesla's does it on the side. It doesn't seem to be a problem, uh, but overall the holster works very well, so it gets an extra two points. Next up is cable length. Talked about this earlier. The maximum length you can get on your cable for the Tesla wall connector is 18 feet. That falls below our 20 foot minimum threshold before you start losing points. It loses two points for that. The cable pliability, we all saw the um, cold weather cable test. It did not perform very well. It loses another point there. Um, a robust construction. Uh, we give it uh, an excellent, so it gets an extra point there. It's a very well-made item. Is it plugged in? Uh, does it plug in or is it hardwired? If this unit is hardwired only, it loses two points. We like to have the units offer both hardwire and plug in. The Tesla wall connector does not, so it's going to lose two points there. Ease of installation, even though this has to be hardwired. We gave it a simple installation so it does not lose any points there. It really is a very simple installation. Many of the hardwired items, uh, chargers lose two points in this category, but the Tesla wall connector is such a simple installation, it doesn't lose any points. It finishes up the construction and durability category with 13 points. Next up is smart and non-smart. Gets 15 points 
um, to start the category as in all the categories. And then because it's a smart charger, it gets five more points. However, it doesn't get anything else um, power share capable. Uh, the Tesla's promised that this will be power share capable, but it's not yet. Um, is it uh, compatible with Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant? Uh, we don't know if Tesla is going to add that feature. Does it record charging, uh, st charging session data? Uh, we, we have no idea. Can it participate in demand response programs? We just don't know any of that yet. Tesla hasn't released any of the information, so it's not going to get any points in that category, any additional points except for the fact that it is a smart charger. So it finishes up the smart, non-smart category with 20 points. Next up is safety certified and warranty. Is the unit safety certified? Yes, it is. It's UL listed. It doesn't get any points because we expect all of the home charging equipment to be safety certified. If it wasn't, it would lose five points. Chargers that aren't safety certified get a big hit in that category. Next up is warranty. The Tesla wall connector has a very good four year warranty. That's better than the industry standard. Most of the chargers we review here have a three year warranty, which we think is very good to begin with. But the Tesla wall connector has a four year warranty. So it gets three extra points. It finishes up the safety certified and warranty category with 18 points. That gives the Tesla wall connector a grand total of 87 points on our charger rater scale. When you convert that to a four star, a five star rating, the, the Tesla wall connector gets 4.35 stars out of five. Very respectable score. But we don't just offer the charger rater score. I also then offer my own personal score, how I feel about the charger, because I don't think you can quantify all of these chargers just with points. I think it's a good basis to work off of, but then you also have to factor in some things that can't be quantified with plus and minus on points. I really like the Tesla wall connector. I think it's a great option if you own a Tesla. If you don't own a Tesla, I would not recommend getting the Tesla wall connector because then you have to use the adapter and it just adds complexity to your daily charging regimen. Um, for Tesla owners, I think it's a good choice. I think it's a very good buy at $500 considering it's a high powered 48 amp charger. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend it for outdoor installations in very cold weather areas because as you saw, the, the, the cable does not perform very well when it's very cold and frozen. So my personal score is a 4.55 stars out of five. And that's gonna give the Tesla wall connector an average score of 4.45 stars out of five. Very good score for a very good charger. And honestly, if you do own a Tesla, I think the Tesla wall connector makes a lot of sense if you wanna buy a permanently mounted wall charger. If you don't wanna use the supplied Tesla mobile connector, which as we talked about earlier, is a very good option. It delivers 32 amps, it'll charge the car almost as quickly as the Tesla wall connector will, and it's free. You just have to install the outlet to plug it into. You don't have to buy anything on the unit and it'll deliver you know, 32 amps to your Tesla unless you drive a tremendous amount on your daily driving regimen. The mobile connector is gonna be more than enough to have your car fully charged by the next day. But for those that do want a permanently mounted solution, a higher powered solution, the Tesla wall connector is a very good choice.